Uh, legal education is a political matter, not a pedagogical one. Legal education was always linked to the training of the legal professions in the political realm. When you have to think about how to train lawyers and judges, you also have to think about where judges are, what space they occupy in the larger political space. So, in general, what happened to legal education was that politicians or the people or whoever was in charge of a revolution, political revolutions, uh, started thinking about changing or they changed um, uh, the, the conception of authority. Then they engineered the political systems. And once they did that, they, um, they put on the shoulders of the judges uh, uh, a definite uh, function. When judges know how to work within the larger political system, they uh, start developing their skills and then the lawyers adapt their practices to those skills. Eventually, the political system uh, realizes that they have to think about the ways of training the lawyers and the judges into the new practices and skills in the new political conception. That, in general, it takes 20 years, a generation. In Latin America, in the 19th century, law was linked to a larger political project. The project was, in general, to put most of the power in the head of the executive power, in the, head of, in the heads of the presidents. And law was um, uh, an instrument uh, to nationalize that political project, to homogenize law in all the national territories. And um, judges uh, used their tools in order to do that. The major tool they used were the codes and the codification ideology. The idea that they were just um, professional um, uh, te technicians that used uh, the codes to apply what the will of the people decided. Uh, thus, law was not seen as a political project or as a political activity. It was uh, a question of logic, not of experience. Thus, um, in the end of the, in the late part of the 19th century, most of law schools in Latin America, in Latin America changed from a very practical case method based legal education into a um, formalistic, uh, dogmatic legal education in order to um, uh, teach those codes and to uh, homogenize the culture, the legal culture in, in, the, in the national territories. In order to do that, they created the, the codes, then they created the treatises, and then they created the handbooks uh, for, uh, for the lawyers to, to know the, the code if uh, they could by heart. Uh, this memoristic, dogmatic legal education was functional to the larger political project, and it worked. In fact, uh, the creation of the, of the national states in Latin America uh, in, in, in a large part um, uh, has to do with, uh, with the expansion of codification and uh, legal uh, doctrine or legal dogmatism. But now we are in a, in a, in a different century and we have a different political project. Uh, after the dictatorships and the massive human rights violations of the last part of the, of the 20th century, um, Latin American law uh, has been reconfigured. The codes uh, were fragmented um, in the sense that different laws now regulate large parts of the, of the code in, in, in uh, contradictory ways with the way the code did before. Uh, the, the law is constitutionalized in the sense that now um, uh, judges 
are using judicial review in order to to um, control the constitutionality of laws in general, but also of the codes. Um, law became global. Uh, the international uh, treaties uh, are now part of, if not the constitution, the larger the, the, the legal system of the different countries. Uh, the international bodies that adjudicate those international treaties have jurisdiction within the, the states. Uh, the local courts are using international law and the jurisprudence of the international um, adjudicatory bodies in order to adjudicate national law. Um, it is a new word. In this word, uh, law is not only created by legislatures and then adjudicated in courts uh, down into civil society, but also civil society is engaged in creating law and in applying uh, international law. Uh, this engagement uh, is not only through individual cases, but also through collective uh, cases that create, uh, through public interest litigation, uh, uh, yeah, collective um, uh, cases, collective uh, decisions, uh, and thus a way to challenge judicially uh, pol uh, pol uh, public policies uh, created by uh, the majoritarian uh, powers. Thus, the judicialization of, of, of politics and the politicization of, of, of the judiciary uh, is changing, is reconfiguring the uh, legal system in Latin America. This process is maybe 10, 15, 20 years old. So now we are ready to uh, bring that process into the classrooms, into the law schools, to describe, define, and criticize this new reconfiguration, and to develop the tools in order to enhance the skills of, of lawyers and judges in order to become the legal practitioners of the new law. Uh, if we can do that, if we can help Latin America to bring uh, human rights, globalization, fragmentation, to multiply the places of political deliberation in the judiciaries, if we can help uh, the newly found uh, constitutional democracies of uh, democracy um, in, um, in Latin America to uh, improve um, uh, their capacities for change and, and for uh, challenging um, the old uh, status quo, I think law schools in Latin America uh, would uh, have a, a, a place uh, in the new uh, Latin American politics. Um, we have the, the people to do it, we have the capacity to do it, and we may have the institutions to do it. But in order to achieve what we need to, to do, we need uh, a lot more engagement in the creation of um, teaching tools, um, of, uh, of um, schools that will enable us to, to develop uh, pedagogical skills now that we know uh, uh, the political agenda of, of legal education in Latin America.